Hi, I'm Ted Finch, the president and founder of Channelmall Marketing and Channelmall.com, the ultimate resource for software marketing. Within the next few minutes, you'll hear more about how to finance a high-tech startup. You'll hear from some of the nation's top VCs. You'll also hear from several local and regional boutique VCs. Not only will you hear from the partners, but you'll also hear from some of the screeners, those people that actually take your business plan and review it prior to passing it on to the partners. In addition, you'll hear from several CEOs who have been highly successful in financing their own company. And finally, you'll learn of alternative methods to finance your company, including the 504B, which is a backdoor approach to going public. I hope you enjoy what you see. Let's go ahead and hear from the experts. There are multiple stages uh, in, in, in the creation of a company. The first stage is always considered to be the seed stage. And the seed stage is usually funded by friends and family or angels. And it's usually anywhere from, you know, a couple of couple thousand dollars all the way to maybe, you know, half a million dollars or so. The second financing round, which may be your first Series A preferred round is usually a round that can be two to five million dollars. Again, it can be milestone based. And that's where you're really looking to establish, to develop the product, to establish some beta customers. And in many cases, you want a, uh, the product finished and at beta, being tested and being having a customer willing to buy that either that enterprise software product or that device and evaluate that product. Um, so the next round is usually the Series B preferred round. And that is a round really that ties to ramping the company to um, profitability, to break even, um, you know, adding more people, uh, and developing the markets, further developing the markets. After that, there's the C and D rounds can be called sometimes mezzanine rounds. And then in the past, there's, after that has been an IPO or an acquisition. You may find some venture capital groups. In fact, uh, in the early, the late 90s, early uh, 2000, you would see venture capital groups actually providing seed stage funding. Um, they've gone away from that, so it's much more difficult for entrepreneurs and startup companies to f find that seed capital. Next stage would be uh, a mezzanine level uh, of funding where you really would go to a venture capital group or an alternative financing organization who now knows that the, the company has had at least enough to um, launch the company to a degree that they may be close to commercialization. What we're finding is most venture capital companies today uh, are really looking beyond the mezzanine level where they normally had participated in, in years previous to the next stage which is really beyond initial commercialization to um, to, to a stage where the company really has uh, a product in the market, has uh, high enough revenue streams where venture capitalists can now participate either in growing the company, going to a quick IPO, or doing some sort of a roll-up. Elements in the business plan that we want to stand out is first of all an understatement that you understand the product you are developing, uh, you understand the market, who your potential customers uh, will be, uh, and an understanding of what it's going to take financially to ramp the company. Every person looking at documents from the point of view of an investment proposal has slightly different views on what they expect. And the optimum scenario is you prepare a detailed plan for every single person tailored to what they're looking for, and that is really the best way. However, there are practical considerations. You can't spend 20 hours a day your entire life writing business plans and modifications thereof. So most people try to hit the broadest group of people that they're targeting with one plan that's well written, concise, and a cogent explanation of the industry they're in. One of the things that business plans are typically missing are just clarity and focus. Uh, a lack of balance between depth and, and 
brevity, and by that I mean some plans are one page long and that doesn't really help us. Other plans I've seen are 40 PowerPoint slides and that doesn't help us either, so something in the middle. Uh, a lot of plans are missing detailed financial statements. And finally, a big gap that I often see in plans is a lack of thought about channels and specifically how to get the business plan's product or service to the end user who's actually going to have to open up his or her wallet to pay for it. The biggest hole in most startup business plans is in the sales and marketing strategy. The CEO generally can talk for hours about the product or the service um, and can give the backgrounds on the management team. But when it comes to a sales strategy, um, they usually try to just say there's a tremendous market, there's a $10 billion market, and if we just get one-tenth of one percent, we'll be successful. Uh, what the VC is looking for is um, how and when will this CEO be able to sell the first product to the first customer, and then how and where will the uh, next 10 customers come and to see the rollout from one customer to 10 customers to 100 customers to thousands of customers. Usually that detail is left out in business plans. The first thing that absolutely categorically without a doubt has to be there is how are you going to make money? Uh, a couple of plans that stick out in my mind had table of contents and outlines at the beginning to help guide me through the document were probably no more than 10 to 15 pages long total, included really nice detailed financials at the end, uh, had either an illustration of the product or diagrams or some website references so that I could get a visual of what they were talking about. You really want to see the entrepreneurs, you really want to see the PowerPoint presentation they have, you want to hear them describe the business. That's how I like to evaluate a company. Uh, business plan, really secondary. You know, people invest typically far too much in the business plan. I'd rather hear the presentation, hear what kind of validation work's been done, and then if it's a go-ahead, take a look at the business plan and the other paraphernalia that comes with the company. The three things that a, uh, a venture capitalist would look for in a, in a company always has been, number one, the management team. Um, a team that uh, has some experience and has the drive to, uh, to make the company a success. Then it has to have some kind of a product or service that, is, um, that can be a great product in a, a market that is booming. So there's a tremendous upward potential. Um, and it has to be in a, a market that uh, can, can beat the competition and do it quickly. I think all VCs um, look at the management team, the product, uh, the market, and the financials. I think investors will uh, primarily want to validate uh, the pain. Uh, are you solving a real problem with your solution? Uh, is, there a, is there a market for it? And then is the market big enough? If the people are good, the size of the market is big, and it's an industry that's growing and dynamic, you increase the odds of success. Okay, the, the venture capital uh, companies today look at the startups very differently than they did two or three years ago. Now when they fund a company, and they call it an early stage company, they, um, it, that's similar to what a company might have been a few years ago called with looking for Series A funding. Today, an early stage company needs to have um, have revenue. Uh, probably it, uh, it's been in business for one and a half to three years, has two or three um, paying customers, and has a product that is past version one, um, has been tried uh, and paid for, and now we're looking at really the investment money is to be used to expand the marketplace, where you have an existing model existing product, existing customers, and you want to take the, uh, the company from a $1 million to a $50 million company in the next five years.
Uh, in real estate, the three most important things are location, location, location. In investing in uh, venture capital situations, the three most important things are management, management, management. The rest of it pales in comparison. Top three things you look for as an investor are experience management team, experience management team, and experience management team. Uh, we place the most weight in our decisions on the management team side in probably the managers or the co-founders recognition that they may need complementary skills to build their company. Their willingness to accept those skills, their willingness to talk to outside independent advisors, their willingness to um, share equity with, um, with key advisors and key employees. In terms of management teams, the criteria is pretty simple. Good people make good things happen. And if people are highly qualified, highly motivated, and understand exactly what they're getting into, then the venture should be successful, everything else being the same. Characteristics of a good management team, well, I like, to, I like to talk about execution intelligence, which means the collective ability of the team, emphasis on the team, not the individuals, to perform as a group. You'd like to see people who've been down the learning curve in engineering, in marketing, in operations, in manufacturing, again, depending on the type of business it is, but people who've essentially learned on somebody else's nickel. Then you want to see a team that's very cohesive and knows how to work, work together. And then you want to see a strong leader, but you don't want to see a strong leader who's so ego-driven that they cannot uh, take input from the market and cannot listen to the rest of their management team. When investors look at a management team, they look at um, really several factors. They really look for an experienced team, a team that you can say has been there and done that, meaning um, taking a startup company or an idea from, from startup and taken through the growth stage, stages and then through a liquidation stage. They're looking for a team that can manage other people as they grow and a team that understands the entire funding process. The management team that is running the company in any stage, regardless of the fact that the management team may evolve in time in the different stages, is two things. First, there's got to be chemistry. The people must be able to get along and work together, respect each other, be passionate about working with each other, being, you know, and delivering on the promise of the vision. And two, it's very paramount, especially now more than ever, uh, to have experience. Experience either on having done it before in that particular segment of the market or in having been in the similar uh, uh, stages, uh, if you will, of, of the size of a company. Two elements to, uh, that, that we use to identify a quality management team. Number one, their experience. Uh, clearly, it comes down to their experience and ability to execute. Uh, most folks have terrific ideas. As we said earlier, ideas are a commodity, execution is king. So we look for folks who true, have a true track record of success relative to execution.